So I've got the Canon R5 here with me. Now this is not going to be an in-depth review of this camera because you guys can already watch a ton of videos, uh, you know, with all the specs and stuff like that. I kind of want to talk about my experience with this camera uh, and kind of how I used it. So. Uh, is it a great camera? Yes, it has a lot of amazing specs. Like just the fact that you can record internally in 8K RAW up to 30 frames per second or you can also do uh, 4K at 120 frames per second. But of course we're living in times when this isn't the only camera with amazing specs uh, that's available and affordable these days. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's important to kind of look at this comparing it to some of the other things out there. Uh, my go-to cameras right now, my primary cameras that I use for my work are the, either the Zcam E2 cameras or the, the Blackmagic Pocket cameras. I love those cameras for their size, you know, functionality, the, the codecs, all that cool stuff that they have. Uh, and they're all very affordable. Now, this camera has a lot of great, even better specs than some of the cameras that I mentioned. But I'm not fully vested into, into the whole Canon world, when, especially when it comes to their new RF lenses. In fact, the only lens that I have and that I've shot with this camera is this Canon uh, kit lens, which is a 24 to 105. Uh, and it's not the fastest lens, but it's actually pretty, pretty good with this camera. And so sort of I'll tell you guys right away that the, the way that I use this camera was not as my A camera for any actual professional work. I use this sort of as my behind the scenes kind of a vlogging camera or uh, even when I did a lot of these kind of like YouTube videos, reviews and things like that. Also something where I needed a camera that would give me a good looking image. Uh, it doesn't matter what lighting situation I was in. I shot some of these YouTube reviews as the sun was already gone and it was getting pretty dark. And that's where this camera shines. It has kind of like the overall best balance i would say it's great in low light has nice slow motion can record you know the, the the 8k raw and 4k raw and the af on this camera is amazing so when i was working by myself and i like i said just needed to get a quick shot of me talking uh, i knew that i could trust that this camera would always nail the focus uh, it has the good eye detection and all that stuff you know good tracking and uh, and it's just really good reliable in that sense now, can you use it for professional work? Of course you can. I mean, if, and again, pretty much all the new cameras these days are gonna give you professional results. Now, the fact that this allows you to shoot raw and all that stuff is great. Uh, I know a lot of people had problems with the overheating. I never experienced that. That's probably because I've never really had this camera being really pushed uh, in terms of like shooting really high frame rates or really high resolution for long periods of time. I usually, like I said, I would set up a quick shot of me talking and I had the camera maybe on the most for like 10 minutes or, or if I was doing like vlogging or th that kind of stuff uh, or even for like home videos. It was just a great camera to kind of take with me, run around with it and, and just record quick clips, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. I was never really, like I said, intentionally worried about, oh, making sure this camera doesn't have overheat. I was just using it like I normally would use this type of a camera. And like I'm saying, in that scenario, I've never had any overheating problems. Now, from the examples that I've seen online, yes, if you have this in really uh, hot weather or, or, you know, environment and you have this camera on shooting high frame rates or, or let's say the, some of the higher resolutions and, and, and the codecs for a very long time, when I'm saying a long time, like longer than 20 minutes, yes, you'll probably then start experiencing problems with this. But then again, a lot of cameras have that kind of problem, especially a lot of the kind of hybrid mirrorless cameras uh, where they have all those internal elements really finely compacted. And now another thing I'm going to say is that while the camera isn't big, it's also not the lightest. So it's not like the best camera of if you're looking for something really, really small and light, like, you know, maybe like I said, for vlogging or something like that. Uh, you can do it. I did use it for vlogging. It has a nice flip out screen so you can see yourself, all that stuff. But um, yeah, just keep that in mind that there are other options out there that, you know, that are going to be smaller, especially when you consider also the, the lenses. Like if you're going to get the native lenses for this, they're not the smallest, lightest lenses. And uh, you can get some of the other Canon full frame lenses. But even that, like with the, the Canon EF adapter and all that stuff, again, it's not going to be a small, very light setup. So just keep that in mind. But at the same time, it's not the biggest camera. It's not a, you know, like a cinema camera you have to shoulder or things like that uh, or get a big big support for it. so uh, yeah in general like i said it, it kind of this camera has like you know has a, some of these higher end features 
and it kind of sits nicely in, in between all the cameras out there on the market these days and because it's Canon and it produces really beautiful colors like right out of the box it's just you know it's a it's an easy camera for to use for for a beginner but also because it has some of the advanced features like raw recording and things like that uh, you know that professionals can use this too now again just keep in mind that the overheating might be an issue if you're looking to use this camera non-stop on like a long uh, you know film shoot so again keep that in mind but at the same time like i said depends on how you work if you're if you're not the one doing these long format, for example, like like live broadcasts and things like that, which in that case you probably wouldn't be using this kind of camera. But like I said, for that kind of stuff, maybe it's not the best for. But for kind of narrative music videos, for example, short films, yes, it's it's a great camera and it gives you a lot of amazing quality. Um, now, some of the other things, like I said, is uh, even though the camera is fairly affordable when you compare it again to all the other kind of selections currently in the market. Uh, keep in mind that obviously the lenses, if you don't have any of these lenses, uh, or even if you want to get the Canon EF glass, but then you got to get that adapter and all that stuff, it's going to add up and cost. Uh, the batteries, you know, the batteries actually are pretty good. Uh, so it's going to run for a long time on those Canon batteries. Uh, but the, but again, if you want to get those good batteries, the, the ones are going to last you longer, more reliable from Canon, then again, it's just going to take, uh, it's going to add up to the cost. And the media is another thing. Like I, when I first got this camera, because it has the ability to record on an SD card, I just thought, okay, I, you know, I have a ton of really good fast SD cards, and I can just use that. And and yes, you can use the traditional SD cards to record, uh, you know, 4K and all that stuff. But if you start going to higher frame rates, like higher than 60 frames per second, or if you want to start shooting in RAW or the the basically higher quality codecs then you will need to get uh, that sort of upgraded card. Now, the one that I'm using is from Lexar, and I found in all of my experience so far working with Lexar that these cards are, are really good. This is a CF Express card. Um, and like I said, Lexar in general has never failed me. They're not maybe the most affordable, but at the same time, I think, you know, when it comes to media, it's better to pay maybe a little bit more than some of these really, really budget uh, options out there. Uh, but get something that's reliable because at the end of the day it doesn't matter what camera you use lenses all that cool stuff uh and, and all the money that you spend on your production at the end of the day all that counts is what's on that little card so you do not want to have cards that are basically going to melt down on you and that's one big thing i'll tell you is that lexar has never failed me whether it with this or when it comes to for example some of the memory cards i got for uh, like my Ursa Mini or, or, or uh, Arri Alexa Mini, all those co uh, cameras that I've used, I've always used Lexar, again, because it is so reliable. Now, I did have some pretty major catastrophic card failures when I was using some of those low-budget cards, uh, memory cards, uh, and, and shooting basically in these, again, higher resolutions or higher frame rates where you're really pushing a lot of data to the memory card being written at the same time and then that causes the temperatures obviously to go up. So this card actually has up to a thousand megabits per second uh, write speeds uh, and 1750 per second uh, of transfer speed. So it's plenty of speed for being able to max out basically all the specs on this camera. Uh, so it's, you know, definitely if you want to, again, if you get this camera and you want to use its full functionality, get yourself a good reliable card like this. Uh, and then if you're gonna get that and you don't want to be frustrated with copying all that footage and all that stuff and being able to basically just work really fast and uh, again Lexar provides these little card readers uh, now again I wasn't paid by Lexar to do this or anything like that they they did send me this card uh, to test out and they said hey let us know what you think alongside some of the other cards and I, I do love it but I actually really like this thing this little uh, card reader uh, that you can get it's a USB-C connection so again, it's a very fast connection, you know, USB 3.1. Uh, so if you have that on your computer or your laptop, uh, definitely get yourself that card reader because again, it's, you know, if you're gonna be recording those huge files, and trust me, the 8K files, especially the 8K RAW files coming off of this camera are huge. So just keep that in mind. So you're gonna go through a lot of these cards and then having to copy all of that through like a traditional card reader that takes forever it's, it's just uh, it's not something you want to be basically dealing with so get yourself the the, the one here from Lexar it's a nice nice kit uh, another thing I can probably say is like I said uh, get yourself the good Canon batteries don't cheap out on those 
that's gonna again it's gonna just save your butt a lot of times because some of the other off-brand batteries are basically they're not communicating with the camera and that means that you won't know exactly sometimes how much juice you have left in them and it could mean that while you're recording those high data rates uh, files the, in the middle of it, the camera could basically just run out of juice and, and drop out and you could end up with corrupt files so again get reliable canon batteries um and then i guess uh, you know other than that you can start shooting with this camera i mean obviously you have to have the lenses so there's a ton of lenses that's one thing i do love about canon is canon has a great selection already of old and amazing new lenses uh, so ton to to select from and i might do another video in the future maybe talking about some of my favorite canon lenses uh, for the different canon mounts but anyways this is kind of a quick little video i wanted to do about the canon r5 and letting you guys know uh, although I, I don't have the time to review every camera that's coming out these days because there's a lot of cameras <laughs> especially this year it seems like a lot of cameras a lot of great cameras were announced and, and released uh, I w what I do you know I, I gotta say is that pretty much from all the cameras I've tested out uh, this year I mean all of them can be used for professional work and and you know kind of smaller productions vlogs that kind of stuff it really just comes down to uh, your budget, your preference of how you like to shoot, what already equipment you have, maybe what lenses you own, things like that. Uh, and that's kind of what you should probably really think about before you, you get too excited about one particular camera because they're all great cameras these days and Canon R5 is definitely one of them. Uh, but anyways, hopefully this video helps out. If you guys have more questions about this camera or some of the other cameras or my choices or why I use the different cameras that I use, uh, as always, drop me a comment, let me know, I'll try to answer all the comments and uh, if you want to get in touch with me even faster, best way to do that is to head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com where you can uh, actually get some free lots and things like that for signing up to my newsletter, plus over there uh, you'll get a quicker response to some of the comments and things like that. Anyways, my name is Tom and I'll see you guys in the next video, bye!